Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Confidence Luo, a hair subject matter expert. I'm right here to give you tips on how to achieve flawless braided weeds and hair weeds. Hello guys and welcome once again to my channel. I remember I did not welcome you guys to a new month yesterday, so I'm going to do that today. I'm welcoming you to your month of upliftment. I'm welcoming you to your month of favor and everything good so let's just jump right into this you know it's a like one day thing right we're going to be continuing so this is a continuation of what we did yesterday first thing now i want to ventilate proper so please determine your middle whether it's a full it or a frontal determine your middle the net in my hand is quite big otherwise i will just trace my middle line inwards and just pin it down at once but this uh, pin in my hand is quite big. It's a T pin. So you want to, if it's a T pin you're using, please do it after the airline guide. That is in front, the, the part you're going to be cutting out. So you don't ruin your net, okay? And then let's pin down. And after that, we're going to now use a smaller pin. I didn't have a smaller pin at the time. That's why I used that one. So I'm going to get a smaller pin and trace that line. That's my middle part. I'm going to trace it inside and pin it down. And then we'll get to business proper. So guys, just before then, if you're a new subscriber, welcome to the family. And I promise you, you don't have anything to regret. And if you're an old subscriber, I want to say thank you very much for sticking around. Your love they sweet me somehow for body he did do me somehow <laughs> thank you guys i appreciate your i appreciate that you you you've been here even while i was away but i'm back now okay i'm back with a banger like i promised so i want you to know that i love you too and i should love you more than you love me and that's why i'm bringing my course that is not so cheap to you for free and i hope you don't take this for granted so please if you're a ventilator get about it and be serious be serious because i can't be bringing this cost to you and you're just like you know you are still doing like you can't be a ventilator if you don't have time right so if you have time then be about it and be serious first of all when you hold your your extension in your hand the way you're comfortable with but, but don't extend it too much from your fingers. And look at what I'm doing. It's quite close. The extension I have is quite close to my, to my fingers, so I can control it. But when you take it, when you push it to, when you have excess there, I don't know. But just do what you can work with, okay? Um, now that we have our center, in due time, we'll fill that up. We fill that remaining space up because this wasn't up to the middle. But before mm -hmm. then, let us learn what we're supposed to be doing today. First of all, I'm changing the direction of my mannequin to show you what you may be doing or someone you know may be doing that is very wrong. Assuming your right hand is to the front of your net and your left hand is to the back of your net. Now you're ventilating to that front, which is your right hand, and then you're returning it to the back. Do you know what you're doing? You're ventilating to the front, and then you're returning it to the back. I see a lot of people do this. You see that? And then you pull to the back. You're simply sending your knots underneath your net. That's why you see people say, I beg go, oh, I don't want to buy made in Nigeria closure. He did pull, he did what, he did that. Because even if it's a single knot and your 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 knot is on top and not underneath the net, it doesn't have friction with the scalp of your client or your scalp. So long as you've sealed it, it's not gonna just come off just like that. But when it's having contact with your head, what happens when you're pulling and wearing, there's a continuous friction. And before you know it, it's to start loosening. 
So please, whether it's a full lace, whether it's a frontal, whether it's a closure, you want to make sure your knot is always on your net. That is, always ventilate towards the back so your knot stays on top. You don't have to now change directions. The, the aim is not to confuse you. So that's why I, I don't want to talk too much. I just want you to see what I'm doing. If you ventilate to the front and return to the back, it means your knot is now underneath the net. That means, assuming the mannequin head is your head, the knot is now having contact with your head. So while you're pulling and wearing, before you know it, it starts going off. Do you understand? So please make sure you're in the direction that tilts to the back down alone. Sliding. Yes. Now let's get into the ventilation net, through the hole you want um, the, the next hole to it. There's a line in between. Okay, you can see this. Now you want to pick one to two. So let's say, depending on the fineness of the hair, but let's just say two is the standard. So you want to pick two strands, but for a hair that is as fine as the one in my hand, three strands will go to, and then you want to bring, okay, you want to pick two strands. Look at what I'm doing when I pick. I'm going to slide the mount in the opposite direction, just to have my extension properly secured, okay? And then I'll raise it back and pull the hair, the strands of hair in my hand to hang against the hook at the tip of the pin. And then you want to slide it down. Make sure it is on the line you're working with. It's easy to bring it out like that. On this, if it's like this, you're going to struggle bringing it out. Make sure it's like on the line. Then you gradually bring down the mouth of the pin and it out. You can go in and out if you're doing the right thing. Just practice. Okay. And then you want to raise it and pull it in. To take it out of your way then you place it on top of this one and twist place it here and twist your hands over once again you want to can you see that certain things are explainable you just have to watch and go <coughs> Let's try again. You want to place the mouth of your pin in the hole you want to work with. Slide it underneath the net through the other hole, make sure, making sure your hand is straight. Pick two to three, three strands of hair. I told you two is the standard. <coughs> but for this, um, if your the texture of your extension is very fine, you can do between three and two. Please don't do three throughout. It's usually too bold. And um, you want to bring the mount down. Use this hand. How do I show you that now? I have to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. When you collect your hair, you use this hand to hold it, like hold it down. Mm. Let's try that. I'll zoom in a little so you can see what my hand is doing. I mean, zoom out. I'll take the strands I need, and then this finger comes in handy. In, remember, I used to pull the mouth in the opposite direction. I pull the mouth this way, so the head, st the strands I'm working with does not fall off. And then I use this finger to hold it against my index. Remember, my index is already holding this hair, so I'll place this one against this and hold it against my index. And then I'm going to slide the mouth back and bring it. On the line I'm working with, slide it through, raise it up, push it in, wrap around this, twist in the opposite direction, making sure the pin is laying in the direction of the hole you have created so you can easily pass through. Do we do that one more time? So you already know what my hand is doing. Let's do that again before I zoom in. You take the strands you need and pull the mouth of your pin in the opposite direction. Use this middle finger, hold it against your index finger firmly, such that you're pulling this but not excessively. You're also pulling this other one. So you can see if you're doing the right thing, you should be able to slide in and out without having issues. Then you bring it up, push this in, slide over this twist, 
and bring it up. Okay. Place the mouth of your pin down. You see the line I'm working with? You don't miss that. Don't just do this thing haphazardly. Make sure you have a guide and follow it religiously. Place the mouth of your pin down. Slide it underneath the pin through the hole in front of you. Take the strands you need. Hold it against your thumb with your middle finger. Bring down the mouth of your pin and making sure the strands you have is hanging against the hook. Slide it on the straight line. Look at my hand. I'm not sliding it from corner. On the straight line so it's easy to bring it out. Now you want to raise this one and push it in. Wrap this and twist and bring it out. I think I should just use this opportunity to teach you knotting pattern. Okay, so now this is your knot direction. Don't 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 um, ventilate this in this direction, and then pull it to this direction. Don't ventilate in this direction, and then pull it to this direction. Make sure you're ventilating in the direction you want the hair to stay. And mostly that is the back of the net. Okay, so you ventilate towards the back of the net. So your knot is on top and not underneath, not underneath the net, having contact with the person's scalp or hair, as the case may be. So now the first knotting system, or should I say pattern, is the single knot, which is what we've been doing, which is suitable for braids. You don't have to stress yourself since it is for braided wig. And you just bring it out. Okay. The second one is my favorite. Is a single double knot. Uh, single double knot. So you're going to do what you're used to doing usually. But just a little trick. So I'm going to cross this over. Right. And what do I do? If I turn and bring it out. It's a single knot, right? If I turn and bring it out, it's a single knot. So I'm going to turn again. Um, I want you to see the difference from where you are. Compare this to this. You see this knot appeared tighter, yet it looks like a single knot. Let's do another one of it. Now I'm using three strands. So you don't think it's because... So I'm crossing this over, which is the usual thing we do. I'll twist once, which is a single knot, and then I'll twist again, which makes it a single double knot. Just compare this to if you're a stylist, if you fix you fix hair, like you fix, maybe you make wigs or you fix some people's hair. You know what it means to wrap your thread, your needle over the thread? over time like two to three times the difference it makes than when you wrap just once okay just have that picture in your head now let's do a, a double knot i don't want to go off the camera so you do this and bring it out remember to stay on the line so you don't struggle do the same thing you would do tighten it but don't bring it out Okay, make sure it's tight. Come back and go again. This is double knot. If you know what you're doing, it should be smooth, especially if you're doing double knot. Please, no matter how fine the strand of the hair is, try to stick between two strands. Don't go to three strands or X this area. Okay, let's do another one. I will show you the difference between the single double knot and the double knot this is two strands and remember this the texture of this hair is very fine very thin so you do what you're supposed to do make sure it's tight down and then come back don't drag it to free your hand this time so you don't lose the one you've tightened and then drag 
So let's do another two of the single double knots. One, two, yeah. Bring it up. I already taught you guys how to eat seal your knots. We have a video on this channel showing you how to eat seal. When you are eat sealing, you don't eat seal in this direction. You eat, you eat seal to the side. So, oh. I would not teach you what is not useful to you. You don't have business with split, single, or double knot. Do you have business with split? I don't think so. And quite someone will ask me, why does the closures that come from um, um, factory usually very dense and our own is not as dense? Of course, you don't need the denseness. But in the next video, I will be telling you, I'll be showing you what uh, makes the closures that come from factory very dense. First of all, you need to know that China has cheap labor. Of course, even the one that is not dense is not easy. So imagine the one that is dense. And it's usually too dense that we come here and start plucking just to have a natural look. You don't need it, but I will just share the knowledge with you. You need to know in case someone asks you, you know. Okay, that being said, let's take all of this out and go into our ventilation proper. I hope you're practicing. Save this video and um, practice, practice, practice. And you probably become better than myself. Okay, I'm not going to jump pack you with... Um, excessive uh, info so you don't get confused but well, if you want or well, am i giving you too much information in one video i don't want to confuse you let's just leave it here you practice you'll get back to the things that are left ask your questions in the comment section i'm going to be there to respond to your concerns okay i'll see you guys in my next video Bye-bye.